All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is Maddie here from Chill TCG. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at the deck list that won our 444 player Chill Series number 27 PTCGO tournament. I'm super, super excited. This was uh, a deck played by Plariers, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm really bad at, the, that, at that pronunciation, um, but he was playing this super awesome uh, Mewtwo and Mew GX deck list. Now, this is sort of a, a psychic Mewtwo, but he is running Aurora Energies because we do have some other secondary attacking options in the deck. Um, but, of course, the deck is, again, focused just around Mewtwo and Mew GX. Uh, we're going to go ahead and break down this list. We're going to talk about it just a little bit. Um, and I kind of want to just share uh, a little bit about the deck. It's kind of its details, how it performed in a lot of matchups. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not actually going to be recording any gameplay for the video uh, today. We're just going to be going over the deck list really quickly. But if you guys are interested in the gameplay and seeing this deck see play, I highly suggest you go check out the Grand Finals match. Uh, which I did post on the channel a few days ago. Link will be down in the description below, um, as well as like up in the annotation. So if you guys are looking to see the gameplay of this deck, it was a great best of three set in the grand finals. Um, and it did end up taking the win, spoiler alert, but it did have a really, really close matchup against Urshifu VMAX. But I do think that this deck was specifically built to actually beat Urshifu uh, Rapid Strike VMAX. So I, I do think that it does have a pretty good matchup, but Rahul played that matchup perfectly. Um, and I do think that uh, this is a phenomenal deck. So we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about it. Uh, Mewtwo Mew GX, it's, it's the focus around the deck. One of the best attackers in the game right now, being a psychic type attacker, is, is of course just really, really good. You are hitting for weakness on those Rapid Strike Urshifu of VMAXs, which is extremely important. Mewtwo Mew GX, it has the ability perfection, uh, and this is going to allow it to use the attacks of any GX or EX Pokemon that are on your bench or in your discard pile, and that's really important. So, all the attacks of all of these GX Pokemon that we have in the deck, uh, we're going to be able to just use those attacks through Mewtwo and Mew GX, and this is going to be the Pokemon... Uh, for the most part, that we're going to be attaching energies to and actually using to attack throughout the game. Just to talk about some of its other attackers that are in the deck, uh, we're just going to go in order here. We have Incineroar GX. Uh, now, this is a stage 2 Pokemon. We're getting, we can't actually put this thing on our bench. We have to discard it and put it in our discard pile to be able to use the attacks. But we're mainly running this Pokemon for its GX attack, uh, Darkest Tornado GX, which does 10 damage, but 50 more for each damage counter on Mewtwo. So if you get a t if you take a hit from an Urshifu, which is about 1 150 to 190, um, you know, you're coming back and swinging for a one-hit KO no matter what for your GX attack, which can be very valuable. For only three colorless energies, so you can attach three seconds to it, um, and just go ahead and swing hard. But that Crushing Punch attack is actually really good as well, 130, um, but you discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Has some sort of niche use, right? Discarding that special energy while doing 130 damage is not bad at all. Um, a good option in, in some case scenarios, but for the most part, the, uh, the GX attack is going to be really important for this guy right here. Definitely big one hit KO potential. Next up, we have Garchomp and Giratina Tag Team GX. This one is super cool. Uh, so it does have Psychic Energy in its attack cost, but you will notice that it has a Fighting as well. Uh, but that's fine because we are running Aurora Energies in the deck. So the first one there, we have Linear Attack. Just does 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So that means we can snipe the bench, finish off a KO for 40 damage. Can be extremely good in a lot of scenarios for one colorless energy. We also have a Calamitous Slash. So for a Psychic Fighting and a Colorless, so it's going to be probably two Psychics. And then an Aurora Energy. Um, uh, we do 160 damage, plus if your active Pokemon already has any damage counters onto it, it does 80 more damage, which is 240, which is actually exactly what you need uh, to get those one-hit KOs on Urshifu VMAX if you are hitting for weakness. But 240 is also a really great number in other matchups, uh, just being able to, you know, of course, one-hit KO a lot of V Pokemon, um, and even some, uh, some, some lower HP tag team Pokemon as well, like Pikram. We also have GG End GX, which is pretty cool too, so you discard one of your opponent's Pokemon, and all the cards attached to it, in this, and if it has three uh, extra fighting energy attached to it, which... Probably won't happen, um, but uh, in if, if you do, in addition to those Pokemon's attack costs, you discard two of your opponent's Pokemon instead. Uh, so this is going to be a really cool option. So like if our opponent really just has one big Pokemon set up, we can GG end them. That's a, that's a vile, viable option. But for the most part, we're running uh, Garchomp and Giratina for that Calamitous Slash, but the GG end um, is definitely going to be a pretty good option. And Linear Attack is also good as well. It just also just fits into the deck pretty nicely. Um, and the next up, we actually have a Reshiram and Charizard GX. Now you'll notice that uh, the energy... Lineup for this deck is just going to be four Horrors, four Psychic, and four Aurora. Now, it's very unlikely that you're going to get, like, all four Aurora on one Mewtwo, or even three at one time. If you do, of course, you do have access to Double Blaze uh, or Flare Strike, but uh, I think that the Outrage attack is mainly what we have in the deck for, although we probably sometimes do have the potential uh, to use these other attacks if we do get three Auroras on our Mewtwo. Just a little bit unlikely, but that Outrage attack is still phenomenal. Does 30 damage plus 10 more for each damage counter on our Mewtwo. We are running big charms in the deck. Uh, which is going to increase the HP of our Mewtwo and Mew GX, which means that if we get hit, um, if we or if we're not, you know, really wanting to use the Incineroar GX attack, 
Um, but, um, you know, we still want to kind of come back and hit for big damage with a low energy attack cost. This outrage attack is going to be phenomenal, and that's going to be a big reason why we're going to be able to able, going to be able to come back and, and kind of outrage reverse one hit KO our Urshu VMAX opponents when they attack us, right? That's going to be pretty important for sure. Uh, so if they hit us for 150, 160, we just come back. Uh, 30 plus that damage and then hopefully for weakness as well uh, gonna be a really good option Especially just for one energy as well as one colorless. So I do like this I do like this uh, this Pokemon in the deck. It's a little bit niche It's a little kind of a you know something you're not always gonna be able to use but in options where you do have of course the four uh, Roar energies put onto this Pokemon. You're gonna be able to do some big damage with the 230 So keep that in mind. Uh, so pretty cool to see Reshiram in, in this list to be honest with you even though it's not a a um you know, a fire type Mew3 welder deck list. But we also have an Elder Gods V in here. Of course, we're not going to be copying the attacks of this guy. We're just going to be using him for his happy match ability. We get to play this guy on our bench and then take a supporter out of our discard pile. Just going to be good to maintain um, our, our supporter count. Find our boss's orders when we need them. Maybe even our Malolana or our Goose Mahala. Or even just a draw supporter. Any of these supporters that we're running in the deck, we're going to be able to take it out of our discard pile and put it directly into our hand with Elder Gods V. Next up, we have Vileplume GX. This is another stage 2 GX Pokemon that we're not going to be able to put onto our bench. But we are going to be able to discard this guy and then use his attacks. Now, we're mainly using this Pokemon for that first attack. Massive Bloom, 180 damage. But uh, it does 10 less damage for each damage counter on our Mewtwo. So we want to use this attack uh, preferably earlier in the game when our Mewtwo has no damage counters onto it. It could be later in the game as well. But as long as our Mewtwo has full HP for just one Aurora Energy and then a Colorless, right? Uh, we're going to be able to hit for 180 damage, which if you are hitting for weakness is going to one hit KO. Uh, your Urshifu VMAXs, it's also going to just do a lot of damage in general, um, and it's just a really good attack for a 2 energy attack cost. Perhaps the best uh, 2 energy attacking option for Mewtwo. Also, if you're playing the mirror matchup, you're going to be able to hit for weakness um, and, and one hit KO other Mewtwo and Mew GXs for just 2 energy, so very important in the mirror matchup. Vileplume GX is phenomenal. Also, just for 1 Aurora, we can Allergic Explosion GX. Uh, which uh, burns them, paralyzes them, and poisons them, does 50 damage. Can be kind of good in some scenarios if our opponent's all out of switch cards. You know, you hit them with that uh, that paralysis uh, kind of lock there. Could be useful. Again, probably not something we're using too, too often, but again, another good option in the deck. Uh, one that I really like a lot. Uh, we have one uh, Dedenne GX. That's just going to be a typical draw supporter, something we can play on our bench to draw more cards. Um, also, you know, Dedenne is really good in Mewtwo because it helps us discard cards, which is very, very useful. Uh, because, of course, we do like to get those uh, GX Pokemon in our discard pile for the most part. Uh, we also have a Gengar in Mimikyu GX. This one is very, very important in the deck. Um, it's another Psychic type, so it works very well. You'll see we have a few Psychic type attackers in the deck. Because they kind of just go really well. We don't actually have to discard them. We can put them on our bench and they're just attached to them manually. Um, and just use them themselves to attack. So that's obviously a good option in the deck. Uh, but Gengar Mimikyu is really, really cool. Uh, it's good against Urshifu as well, so... Uh, it's only got 240 HP, but it is a psychic type Pokemon. It's got that attack there, Poltergeist. Uh, 50 damage times 50 more. Uh, it does 50 damage for each trainer card that's in your opponent's hand. But pairs perfectly with the Horror House GX, which is the GX attack that we're probably going to be using pretty often. Um, but uh, this reads that just for one psychic energy, your opponent cannot play any cards from their hand during their next turn. Um, and if it has one extra uh, psychic energy attached to it in addition to this, uh, each player draw cards until they have seven cards in their hand. So if your opponent has a pretty small hand size, um, or even if they don't, you can go ahead and attach two energies to your Mewtwo or your Gengar Mimikyu. Um, and, uh, you know, you pop off with Whorehouse, make sure they draw seven. They can't play any cards from their hand. Uh, so next turn when you're attacking, they're going to have eight cards in their hand. And potentially you could get a nice one big uh, one-hit KO on a lot of Pokemon here. Poltergeist, for, for a low energy attack cost, can do a whole lot of damage. Um, and it's also a really good partner with Mewtwo because, of course, yes, it only has 240 HP, but Mewtwo has 270, and it's going to be able to uh, be able to utilize the attacks of Gengar and Mimikyu as well. Uh, just a really, really cool option uh, and, and a card that I really like uh, for sure in the deck. Uh, we have two Jirachi GXs. Now, this is actually interesting. You might be like, why is he running two Jirachi GXs? Uh, this is mainly because we would really like to get this thing in our discard pile or on our bench really early in the game. Not only is it going to be useful in the mirror matchup when you're playing other Mewtwo decks that might not be running uh, Jirachi GX because it does eliminate your psychic weakness. Um, uh, but uh, the thing is with, with Jirachi GX is a lot of times Urshifus are also running Jirachi GX. So you having one on your bench typically doesn't really hurt that much. Uh, because they're probably going to put one on their bench as well, so it does eliminate their psychic type weakness if you are playing Urshifu. But in that matchup, if they're not playing it, you can just discard it. But we're running two because it's extremely important to get this in your discard pile or on your bench early in the game so we can use that star search attack. It's mainly the way that we're going to want to be starting off our games. If we go second or just on our first turn, we want to use that star search attack through Mewtwo and Mew GX 
uh, which you search your deck for an energy card and attach it to one of your second Pokemon, uh, and then you shuffle your deck. So this is going to be a really good way to just accelerate that second energy at the end of your first turn. Here, Mewtwo and Mew GX. Next turn, attach the third one, and then you're off and running. Uh, so it's going to be extremely, extremely important. It's also, you know, any energy. So you can search your deck for that Aurora energy right off the bat. It's going to be extremely useful. If you guys go and watch the Grand Finals match, you'll actually see that that was an extremely important uh, aspect of this deck. I um, mean, it was very consistent that he got, uh, that player ears got that off turn one. Um, and you'll see it if you watch the video, uh, mainly just because he was running multiple of these Jirachi GXs in his deck. So I actually do really like that a lot. Uh, but that's sort of the main reason why we have Jirachi. Yes, it is good in the mirror matchup, but for the most part, that star search attack is probably the most ideal start to any game you could have. So very important. Um, and then, yeah, you know, we're back to Mewtwo, Mew GX. We're running three of these guys, mainly just because it's our main attacker. It's the most important card in the deck. And it's going to be a really good one for sure. So that's the Pokemon lineup. We're running 13 Pokemon in total. Actually, not that many for a Mewtwo deck list. But, you know, it's actually a pretty uh, a pretty solid amount. A lot of one-ofs, for sure. I mean, you're running one of everything except for the Jirachi GX uh, and the Mimikyu and Mew GX. One thing to note is that uh, we are running a Crobat as well. I don't think I covered the Crobat. But, again, it's just another way to draw some cards here. Um, but, moving on to the Trainer cards. And I'm actually just going to cover the supporters right off the bat. Uh, we're running three boss's orders. I think that's just standard. Pretty much every deck should be running boss's orders. I think three is a really good number. Some decks like to run four. Some can get away with running two. But for the most part, I think that running three boss's orders is just really fair in most decks that you're playing. So no different with this deck for sure. Next up, we are running a Guzma and Hala GX. Uh, or tag, not GX, sorry, tag team. Uh, this one's really, uh, really good in, in this deck. So, you know, you discard, or, well, you search your deck for a stadium card. Uh, reveal it and then put it into your hand but if you discard two other cards from your hand you can search for a stadium a pokemon tool and a special energy card which is extremely important in this deck because it does definitely really rely on all of those three things pretty heavily uh, it's also going to be a good way to discard some of those cards in your hand and put them in your discard pile going to be especially good so we can copy those attacks with mewtwo and gx uh, mewtwo and mew gx right so very important um, but we'll get into why this card is really important uh, later on we're only running one in the deck so it's not like super crazy super needed but it is going to be a really good consistency card in the deck we're also running one malolana and uh, malolana is just really good in general uh, when you're playing those urshifus right it, they're a lot of times hitting you for 150 160 which is going to two hit ko you but if you do have that malolana if you do get it off after they attack you the first time you are living that second hit which turns into a three hit ko and preferably uh, you're going to be able to KO them before you KO, or they KO you, which is going to be ma like massively important, right? So Malolana is actually pretty interesting in the deck, but again, very, very important nonetheless. Um, and we're just running one of these as well. Uh, kind of kind of interesting, but for the most part, it's actually really, really good. And one thing I do want to note, we're running three Mewtwo and Mew GXs. We're running one Gengar Mimikyu, one Reshiram and Charizard, one Giratina Garchomp, and then the Guzma Hell and the Malolana. So that's a lot of tag team Pokemon, but we are running two tag calls. So I just wanted to kind of give you out there... Uh, get that out there to kind of tell you how, a little bit more, you know, it's easier to find these these cards, right? Um, next up, we're running four Marnies, and we're running three Professor's Researches. I do think that the higher count of Marnie is probably better than Research. Although Mewtwo decks might like to run Research just because it discards more heavily, I do think that the heavier hand disruption in this deck with the four Marnie is really good. Um, again, if you were to go three Marnie, four Research, I don't know if it would really change the deck that much, but I do think right now running a high count of Marnie uh, is really good since we are running Chaotic Swell in the deck as well. Uh, so that's kind of the supporter lineup. Um, nothing too, too crazy. A little bit of a tack call engine in there, just a slight one. Um, and everything else is pretty, pretty standard. Uh, moving on to the trainer cards. We're running four Cherish Balls and four Quick Balls. Now you'll notice that, you know, not everything in the deck is a basic Pokemon. The majority of things are. But, of course, the Incineroar GX, the Vileplume GX, those aren't uh, basic Pokemon, which is fine. Uh, because we can search them out with uh, the Cherish Ball. But almost everything in the deck... He's also searchable with Cherish Ball, um, but uh, Quick Ball is also really nice because you get to discard that card when you, you know, to play Quick Ball, so it actually works out in your favor. I think that four of each is actually really consistent, um, and I think that it's a definitely a good Pokemon search count to be running in this deck list, um, and, and I, I have, you know, I'm, I'm in total agreement with running four four in this deck for sure. Uh, one reset stamp, I think that it's really cool with a deck like this that does have some disruption to it, uh, kind of get some late game sweeping potential. Um, I do think that reset stamp is going to be viable. I also think it's really good in a lot of matchups. Uh, specifically, like if you're playing ADP and they KO you, take four prize cards. If you're there playing Urshifu and they take multiple KOs, they go down to one or two prize cards. It just makes a lot of sense to be running that reset stamp. There's a lot of times where it's going to be really valuable to you. Uh, so I like the one stamp. Uh, four switch cards, pretty standard. Nothing crazy here, no escape ropes. But uh, four switch, you know, makes a lot of sense to me personally. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, yeah, it's just four switch. I, I don't know. Switch cards are pretty pretty common in the... Uh, in the format so i don't have too much else to say about that again the two tag calls consistently find those supporters and more of our pokemon 
Uh, so again, a lot of Pokemon search in here with a little bit of a supporter search thrown in, which is definitely really good. And then we have two tag switches. Now tag switch is pretty interesting, so we get to move two energies from one of our tag team Pokemon to another one of our tag team Pokemon. This is going to be huge, actually, uh, mainly just because we're main we're going to be for the most part manually attaching our energies. So if we know that we're about to die, or, or not die, but you know when we know one of our Pokemon is about to get KO'd, right? Um, maybe we just tag switch those energies to another Mewtwo Mew GX. Uh, kind of switch in and just start attacking with that one to kind of conserve our energies, right? Uh, sometimes you, you inevitably one of your Mewtwo and Mew GXs is going to get KO'd that turn, um, and that's fine. Sometimes you can just accept that, but for the most part, you don't want to lose the energies because you've been manually attaching them all game. Uh, this is the perfect uh, kind of scenario, and this is why we're running Tag Switch. Uh, it's just a good way to conserve our energies as well as, um, you know, we can kind of split our energies through our Pokemon throughout the game. Um, and then if we ever need to, we can kind of move them, right? Um, attack switch works with any kind of energy, so we can move our um, our special energies as well, which is the most important facet of this tag switch card. We're going to be able to move Aurora's horror energies uh, over from one of our Pokemon, tag team Pokemon, to the other, which is going to be extremely, extremely good. Uh, so I do really like the two tag switch in the deck. kind of gives it some flexibility when it comes to its uh, just manually attaching every turn. And then we have one Chaotic Swell. One Chaotic Swell, it's just probably the best stadium that we could be running. It's a little bit disruptive, helps with those fire decks. Also, helps to get rid of the martial arts dojos, uh, which uh, Urshifu might be running. So we just kind of kind of have to keep that, I guess, in mind. Uh, but uh, yeah, I do think that Chaotic Swell is probably the best option in this deck. And I think that most Mewtwo decks should be running Chaotic Swell. Also, if you're playing against like Dragapults or some other decks like E-Turn or something that might be running Power Plant, it's definitely something that you don't want to deal with. So for that reason... Uh, one Chaotic Swell definitely makes a lot of sense. Now getting into the tool cards, this is actually uh, an extremely important facet of this deck. We're running one Air Balloon, uh, we're running two Big Charms, and we're running two Stealthy Hoods. Now the Air Balloon, of course, it's just going to be really good. Gives our Mewtwo's free retreat, gives a lot of our Pokemon free retreat like Gengar Mimikyu. Um, you know, the Crobats, Eldegosses, things like that, uh, which is definitely going to be really good. It's kind of like a switch card that kind of sticks around, so it's, again, just a really good option. Uh, Big Charm is going to be really useful as well because it kind of gets our Mewtwo and Mew GXs uh, out of range of kind of getting one-hit KO'd by uh, typically Zacians for ADP, but also other matchups as well. It uh, kind of gets us out of two-hit KO range as well with the Malolana, so I do like Big Charm a lot. I think that it's a really good uh, tool card to be running in any Mewtwo deck, any tag team deck, realistically. Uh, if you kind of want to be safe from those Zacians uh, after the ADP boost and and the uh, you know the Rusted Sword, I think that Big Charm is going to be a really good option. Now, one thing that's very, very important and one thing that's pretty new to Mewtwo decks, but something that was insanely clutch, and again, I do urge you to go watch that Grand Finals match, uh, was the Stealthy Hoods. Now, this was a big brain play. When you're playing uh, Urshifu, Urshifu really knows that Mewtwo is really popular. It's a really good card and a really bad matchup for Urshifu typically. So what it does is it'll run Jirachi GX to get rid of its Psychic Weakness. But on top of that, it'll run Zigzagoons to set uh, to, to put down pings, like to put damage counters onto your opponent's Pokemon. And they'll also run Mimikyu GX just as another, or not GX, just uh, another um, Mimikyu from Cosmic Eclipse. Uh, they'll run a, a Mimikyu just as another failsafe, right, to make sure that those Mewtwo Mew GXs aren't going to be able to attack you this turn. Um, or just in general, right? So, you know, because of the Mimikyu GXs, I do think that Stealthy Hood, as well as Giratina, they're running Giratina as well, which, of course, discards special energies. We're running a high special energy count. Uh, for this reason, those two cards are a really big threat to Mewtwo and Mew GX and this deck. So the Stealthy Hoods, again, prevents all effects of your opponent's abilities done to this card, uh, done to the Pokemon that this card is attached to, and you remove any existing effects. So extremely powerful. Kind of makes your Mewtwo immune to the Mimikyu ability. Um, it's going to make it uh, immune to uh, the Giratinas, which is really good. Uh, it, again, it just kind of makes it that much more safer in the Urshfu matchup. Um, and I think that this was an incredibly smart inclusion into this Mewtwo deck. And I think that it's phenomenally, phenomenally good. I mean, if you're running Mewtwo decks in the future, if you're really trying to beat Urshifu, I think that Stealthy Hood is one of your best options. I mean, I think that this was a big component of this deck being successful at the last Chill Series. Very meta-defining. I think that it's definitely going to change the meta. I think that now that this Mewtwo deck has won this tournament uh, with Stealthy Hood, I think people are just going to be running Stealthy Hood in all forms of Mewtwo decks. Things like Welder Mewtwo, uh, Grass Mewtwo, even Picarom. I've seen people run Stealthy Hood now. It's definitely just really important, and I think that it's really opened people's eyes as to how they should be running Mewtwo decks here um, in the next, uh, you know, few weeks or so. So I do think that Stealthy Hood was massive. Onto the energy count, we're running 12 energy in the deck. It's really important since we're just manually attaching turn after turn. We don't want to miss a turn of manually attaching energy, so that's why we're running 4 Aurora, 4 Horror, and then just 4 basic psychic energy. Now, Fan of Waves is pretty relevant, but we do have 
uh, Stealthy Hood to protect us from Giratina. So it should keep those energies on us more often. Uh, more often than not, 12 energy should be pretty easy to, to manually attach, as well as that Star Search on our first turn. Uh, we can even do it twice if our opponent's kind of slacking right on their first few turns. So it's going to be really, really important. Um, and I think that uh, Horror Energies is just a really good pick. If you're running Psychic Energies, Horror, horror Energies is just phenomenal. Uh, when they attack you, they take two extra damage counters. Really, really good. Kind of fixes a lot of math. You can put multiple on your Mewtwo, and now when they hit you, they take 40 damage, which is actually a lot, uh, realistically. Especially if they're hitting you twice to KO you. The Aurora Energies, again, it's just going to work really well with the, um, the, you know, the Giratina Garchomp to kind of fill in for that Fighting Energy. Uh, Reshiram and Charizard to fill in for that Water Energy there. And then Vileplume GX to fill in for that Grass Energy, right? So we're able to use those three attackers pretty consistently because we do have the four Aurora Energies. And again, searchable with Star Surge and movable with Tag Switch. Uh, so 12 Energies in the deck, and this is the deck list, guys. Um, again, I apologize, we're not, um, you know, going to be playing the deck. I'm just crunched for time today because today is the massive $1,000 GG Tour tournament. And I'm recording this early in the morning before this tournament begins. So I do apologize. I, I'm sorry, guys. The next decklist video that we'll do will have gameplay. But fortunately, you guys still are able to watch this game uh, or watch this, this deck in action in the Grand Finals match. So I highly suggest that you go check out that video. It's at like 3,000 views now. Um, and I know you guys really enjoy watching the finals video. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my breakdown of this deck. Hopefully I explained it a little bit well. Um, but uh, I do think it has a really good Urshifu matchup. I think it also does pretty well in just a lot of matchups in general. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I think that it's a really phenomenal list. I'm not saying it might be the best way to play Mewtwo in general. Uh, but I think that it's very important. It's very new and it's very meta-defining. And I think that all Mewtwo decks in the next coming months are definitely going to be kind of based off this kind of skeleton. Uh, where you're running, you know you know, the Stealthy Hood, and you're, and you're running the, the Double Jirachi GX, things like that, the Malolana, Goose Mahal Attack Hall Engine. I just think that it's really smart, um, and I think that it's really well positioned in this current meta. Uh, so that's going to be the video, guys. Uh, about 21 minutes of you rambling about a deck. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I've been Maddie from Chill TCG. Uh, before we go, thank you so much for 3,000 subscribers. It means so much to me, um, and it's absolutely phenomenal uh, that our community has grown this, this much. It, it's really actually ridiculous. Um, and if you're watching this right now, if you made it this far into the video, don't forget to register for Chill Series number 28, which is coming up on Wednesday. It's a phenomenal event. Uh, me, Zach Lesage, uh, the, the people from the Yellhorn, we're actually coming together to sponsor this Chill Series tournament. It's going to be phenomenal. 250 Battle Styles packs and a gold quick ball for first place. I really can't wait, guys. It's going to be phenomenal. Free entry as well, so link to register for that will be down in the description below. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Maddie from Chill TCT. I'm going to get out of here. Have a good day.